Welcome back everybody. Today, as you probably guessed from the title of the video, as well as the thumbnail, we are going over this optic right here. This is the new, well, at least relatively new to the civilian market, uh, Trijicon 1-8 VCOG. This one is specifically the SCO variant or Squad Common Optic as designated by the U.S. Marine Corps. And basically this is kind of going to be a two-part video all in one. It's going to be a review of the 1-8 VCOG, the new one, right? Uh, we're gonna go over that, then we're gonna go over some of the specific details that this has that some of the other offerings do not have in terms of 1-8 VCOGs for the Marine Corps. And then kind of what I think about this scope as a choice for the Marine Corps. Now, I was never a Marine, but uh, certainly served as an, a soldier as well as an airman. And I have some thoughts on that, as I'm sure many of you do as well. And I've talked to a few Marines about this uh, and their experience with it as well. But before we get into the details of the actual optic itself, I wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, and that is Euro Optic. It's the perfect sponsor for this video um, because right now they have some of the best prices by far on these optics, as well as many other things out there on the market. Um, I've been sending my viewers to Euro Optic for years now at this point for different deals. Um, if it's on their site, it is in stock. They're an American veteran owned corporation as well. And they're just good to go all the way around. Never hear any customer service issues with them. So thank you to your Euro Optic for the sponsorship. Now let's get up close and personal. Check out some of the details of this optic. As we get into the details of the optic, we'll work our way from the rear forward to have some semblance of order. So with the SCO version, the US Marine Corps version of this scope, you do get these Tenebrex uh, flip up lens covers. I'm not a huge fan of lens covers on LPDOs, but they are pretty nice from what I've seen. They seem pretty durable, uh, much more so than most, but uh, you can remove them as well, which we will do to talk about the next feature of the scope. So we do have our quick focus or fast focus, depending on whom you ask eyepiece here and what this allows you to do is it allows you to focus the reticle of the optic to your eyes. Everybody's eyesight's a little bit different. Some folks have astigmatism, nearsighted, farsighted, etc. cetera. Um, so it just gives you a lot of ability to set it up for your eyes. So that way, no matter what, the reticle will be crisp for you. Uh, moving forward, we have our throw lever here. And one of the, I guess, downsides or things that people are concerned with whenever it comes to LPVOs on combat rifles in particular is getting snagged on gear and having your magnification not where you want it to be. I gotta say Trijicon did about as good a job as you can do uh, for that problem set. So um, you can see it does have our ridges on there and it has kind of like a cattail built into it and it allows you to move it from one to eight. It's pretty much exactly 180 degree throw all the way around. But the reason I said they did a good job of it, or a combat optic, is that it's difficult to move. It's not easy. It's very smooth, which is nice, but you're just not gonna bump that. I mean, I'm, I'm hitting the actual throw lever there pretty hard and it's not moving it at all. Um, so, you know, you can hit it. It ain't going anywhere unless you're intentionally doing it, which for a combat, Optic is exactly what you want. So uh, I wouldn't worry about it getting snagged on gear or anything like that. And again, the throw isn't that long, right? One thing that's nice about it is that it's the first focal plane reticle though, which we'll get into in great detail so that any point along the way, if it did get bumped, say from uh, one to 1.5 or whatever the case may be, uh, it's still usable in terms of all the sub tensions and things like that on the reticle that we of course will get into as well. Uh, continuing on forward, the body itself is made of forged 7075 T6 aluminum. Uh, that's crazy. So if you know anything about optics, very few companies companies will make their bodies, whether it be scopes or red dots, out of even a 60, uh, 61 or a 6000 series aluminum. And when they do, it's typically billet. So what Trijicon did here is, for, again, for folks that don't know, forging is stronger than billet and 7075 T6 aluminum is stronger than the 6000 series aluminum. So this is one piece forged uh, housing, which is crazy. So in terms of durability, as you'd expect from a VCOG, they are known for being extremely durable. This one absolutely uh, lives up to that reputation. And then it has sort of like a layer on it of kind of a rubber plasticky type of material that makes it even more durable, um, impact resistant, uh, waterproof, all of those things, which it certainly is. And then again, moving forward, we do have our up marked right there and then our right marked there. It's gonna be one of the dings I'll put on it is that I prefer them to be sort of on the turret so that way the shooter, from the shooter's perspective rather, you can actually see where you're moving your reticle when you're zeroing it. That said, 
not a big deal because um, again, this is designed to be zeroed and then left. So you're not supposed to be dialing anything like that. And these have uh, 0.1 MRAD or 0.1 mil of adjustment, click adjustment in both the elevation and windage. And I believe it has a total of 35 mils or MRAD of adjustment for both windage and elevation. So no matter what, you're gonna be able to get your rifle zero. That's plenty of movement there for you guys. And the clicks, as you can imagine, I don't know if my mic will pick it up, very tactile, very audible. You know when you're moving it, which is exactly what you want. You're not gonna accidentally move it. Additionally, the turrets there are dummy corded down, which typically I wouldn't like for my personal rifle, but I mean, we're talking about Marines here. Um, so that's definitely what you want. You don't wanna lose in it. That said, I'm sure they're gonna do their best to lose them and probably will lose them anyway. But once they go down on there, their O-ring sealed, so that way, again, it maintains that weather resistance that it does have. Um, and then continuing forward, we have a 28 millimeter objective. And the reason Trichicon says that they went with that was instead of the old 24 millimeter objective was to get better light gathering capability, which absolutely makes sense. This thing is very, very nice in terms of lens quality, light transmission, true color, all of those sorts of things. There's absolutely no way, in my opinion, that you can complain about it at all um, and then of course we have our battery compartment up front here which again is o-ring sealed and is part of the forged aluminum housing um, so one of the benefits of this scope i've said to date that to, i haven't really seen any daylight bright scopes out there on the market of course most scopes are going to be made uh, using a cr2032 or some sort of variant of a smaller uh, battery like that but using the double a battery they're able to get this reticle much brighter than what I would typically see on an LPVO. I don't know that I would say it's daylight bright for like a Arizona day at noon, just as an example. But for most lighting conditions, like right now, it's about an hour and a half from sunset here. It's definitely daylight bright in these conditions without question. So if you want to use it sort of like as a red dot up close and personal, you can do so. That said, the glass is etched, um, so you don't need illumination at all. All of the daylight shooting I've been doing with it um, has been with the exception of just turning it on and using it as a red dot of close and personal just to test it so I can talk about it for the review. But my personal use of it, I've just left the illumination off. That said, uh, you do get decent battery life for a scope. Um, you know, your red dots, you're talking about years, but in scopes, typically you're talking about a couple days of battery life is all you're gonna get with it illuminated. This one here on setting six, um, you will get illumination for almost a month. So just under a month on setting six, which again, for a LPVO is very, very good. We flipped the scope around here so you guys can get a look at the illumination. Now, unlike the turret markings that are on the body of the scope that you can't see from the shooter's position, these ones you can. And the illumination settings are excellent on this one. So each setting has an in-between, which is perfect. I always say that in an LPVO, that's exactly what I'm looking for. And you can see there it goes all the way up to nine. And then we have two night vision settings, which I've tested, and it works perfectly fine with my night vision settings. Either one actually is quite bright. Uh, uh, I would imagine most folks out there are going to leave it on the lower illumination for night vision because it is, like I said, quite bright under night vision. And of course, you can't see it at all um, in daylight hours, but it gives you those in-between positions. So that way you can go between the settings and leave it in the off position if you want to. And then when you want illumination, just one click and you're back on there. And that is nice. Again, with the battery life, if you accidentally leave it on for a day or two, when you go to look through it again, you'll realize it's on and you can make a choice again if you want to keep it on or off but that certainly is nice now in terms of the actual front of the scope here it is threaded so that way you can put an anti-reflective device on it the sco package doesn't come with it but i do know that you know as we get to the point where folks want uh you know near peer fighting capability you're not going to want a lot of ir signature coming out the front and that anti-reflective device will certainly help with that if you're using you know the night vision setting it's probably going to be minimal if any at all uh, so that certainly is a nice feature set as well there's a few differences with the SCOs, as we've already mentioned, versus your standard 1 to 8 V cogs that you can buy. 
buy. One of them is that it comes in this padded case here, which is very, very nice. Um, it's excellent. It's padded, obviously FDE with that Marine Corps universal color. It has your lens pen in there and uh, also has a scope cover, which no one will use in the Marine Corps. <laughs> There's no way, uh, but it goes on there and covers it up if you're into that. But the SEO version does come with all of that. Additionally, it comes with the LaRue mount on here that you guys have seen. It's a fantastic mount. I believe it's the LT799 designation, but uh, it's their ACOG mount with a locking piece here and is quick to attach. So it's also lighter than the standard thumb screw uh, model that comes with these. Uh, that's what comes with all VCOGs that I'm aware of with the exception of this one. And this mount is excellent. It makes it a little bit lighter, a little bit slimmer. Um, although this is a pretty chonky optic, um, it does additionally have the ability to adjust the tension here um, because every 1913 rail isn't in spec as we all know, and particularly on a Marine Corps rifle, uh, they could have pieces missing out of them, things like that, chunks, rocks gouged out, and you can adjust it to fit it. So that certainly is a nice feature. Um, additionally, not on the mount per se, but on the body of the scope that we haven't talked about there, it still has our Bible verse. And then if we flip it on over to this side, we have the Made in America designation. I don't think I mentioned either that we do have a dummy cord there on the actual battery cap mount. But the mount here, the LaRue mount is fantastic. Made in America like everything else on this package with the exception of this, these here which were made in Canada. Everything's very compliant as you would imagine. But it's simple to put on and off. It retains zero. You just go ahead and lock this piece down. Actually if I can get the front mount out of the way because I can't see it. Lock this piece down. Lock this piece down and then push in so that way you can't move this latch here. That is key Marines. If you guys are out there pay attention to that one. Now one other feature that I can't show you guys on camera uh, that's really nice about this scope is the eye relief. So most of your low power variable optics out there are going to have an eye relief of three to three and a half inches, which generally speaking is just fine. And 99 times out of 100, you're never going to have an issue with eye box or eye relief if you have that kind of eye relief. Um, now, shooting from unstandard positions or non-standard positions, which is a very likely thing in a combat scenario, uh, this one here has an eye relief pretty much throughout the entire range of magnification of four inches. It doesn't really move at all, which certainly is very nice. And it just gives you a little bit more flexibility um, when engaging at different distances with different shooting positions. So definitely do like that feature of it. Now let's talk about the actual reticle itself. It is a mill-based reticle and it does have some wind holds, but it's an interesting choice, we'll put it that way. Um, so on one power, one thing that's really nice about it is it does have those rings around the horseshoe portion. So it makes shooting up close and personal fast. For LPVO, that's first focal plane in particular, this is one of the faster reticles out there. Um, it has the stadia lines at the three, six and nine o'clock position on the edges as well that really help draw your eye to the center. Now on low, you're not gonna see like the center crosshair or anything like that on the one power magnification, um, but you also don't need to, right? So anything within 50 yards, you just put that circle around it, you're gonna hit it and not have to worry about it. So that is nice. Now that said, when you do illuminate it, on the low setting, you do see the dot in the center. So if you guys want the precision at one power, which I'm not sure really why you would, but if you do, um, it does give you that capability with the dot being illuminated as well as those horseshoe pieces. Now, as we zoom in all the way in, uh, really anywhere in the reticle, or rather anywhere in magnification, for that matter, because it is a first vocal plane reticle, um, we're gonna have our milling capabilities. Now, uh, basically in the center, we do have the three hashtags, or rather four hashtags, hashtag, and then that dot in the center of it. That, of course, is gonna be your point of aim for zeroing the scope. And then after that, we do have a mill pattern going out uh, on your windage to 10 mil being marked. Of course, each of those uh, hash marks there is going to be one mil, and then the center ones between it are going to be half mil indicators. Uh, on the um, elevation, of course, the same thing is going to be true. The full size lines are going to be one mil apart and then half mil in between. And then at the five, 10 and 15 mils, we do have larger lines in the center and then we do have wind holds as well. Now, the issue I have with this for the intended use of the United States Marine Corps to be giving to every infantryman is that the windage holds 
aren't super usable with the ammo that we're using. So I'm just gonna roll in a screenshot here from my Strolog Pro using M855 62 grain green tips out of the IAR rifle, right? So um, as you'll see here, those wind holds don't really become usable until you get out to distances that it's relatively difficult to be able to engage targets at. Additionally, uh, when using this, unlike the RCO that probably a lot of Marines are used to, it doesn't have a BDC type of reticle. So you're really gonna have to know your, your dope chart, right? So uh, talking to Marines who have gone through their infantry school recently, and they're actually using these optics, one of them told me that the instructors were essentially just giving them a dope card, being like, this is where your point of impact is at 300, at 500, etc., on the hashtags all the way down, which is perfectly fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's absolutely usable. But if you are a Marine, I would recommend spending two to four hours or whatever the case, however long it takes you when you're not eating crayons or whatever, to learn the mill system because this scope as it sits right now is very capable right so you can have your dope card you can have your wind holds and all of those things that this offers you but if you don't know how far away something is to range estimate that becomes relatively difficult but if you know how the mill system works and how to range estimate things at different distances it gives you increased lethality that most of the guys in your squad probably don't have simply because they're not as familiar with the mill system now everyone thinks that you know your average infantryman is going to be trained on that. I got news for you. It's probably not going to happen from the guys I've talked to already who are fielding these. It has not happened. So essentially, like I said, they're just using a dope card for their qualification tables and they're just rolling with it. But again, for any of the Marines out there who are going to be issued this, I do recommend taking the time to learn the mill system because it just makes you more lethal, which is exactly what you want on the battlefield. At this point in the video, I think we've covered all of the relevant features on this with a couple exceptions. First off is going to be clarity. I've probably rolled in some footage, some screenshots and things like that of the reticle. That said, it's impossible. I'm telling you it's impossible uh, for you guys to get a feel of how clear um, the actual glass is on a scope through a camera, through your computer or your phone that you're watching this on. I mean, I do it all the time. This is what I do. And I'm telling you, I've seen all the images. It's pretty tough to do, um, to actually translate what it looks like with all the filters of the information that I have as they get to you, if that makes sense. Um, but on one power, the thing is absolutely a true one power. It is like looking through a pane of glass. It has no aberrations at all on the side. There's no like slight focus or anything like that that's gonna distract you as a shooter. It's super fast and super clean at one power and eight power as well. Um, but we're really gonna notice it in my opinion at one power is gonna be transitioning to different targets. It allows you to just shoot two eyes open. If you see a target out here, you know, in your peripheral, I'm right-handed and right eye dominant. If you see it on your peripheral, it's very easy to just look over and have the scope be where you want it to be intuitively. That definitely is one of the advantages of any LPVO, but particularly one that has as good of glass as this one has. It's, it's just, I mean, it's really good. There's, I have not used a one to eight that has better glass, put it that way. I've used others that are comparable, but I haven't used one that's better. So phenomenal glass quality. Absolutely cannot complain about it at all. One of the things you can complain about. <laughs> It's going to be the price point on this one. So I think the MSRP is over $3,000 on it. But right now, looking around street price, you can find, again, the SCO version, the Squad Common Optic version, uh, for around $2,300 or less. So it is not cheap at all. Um, it's very rugged. It's very durable. It's also very large. So your standard 1 to 8 VCOG is going to be coming in right at 32 ounces. Uh, this one here with the LaRue mount knocks about an ounce off that, but still 31 ounces. And I believe it's almost 10 inches long as well. So it is a large optic, particularly one that is a low power variable you know, type of optic. Now there's no uh, traditional rings or anything like that, which absolutely is an advantage over a lot of competitive offerings. No doubt about it, the mounting system on this is solid. It's proven, it's durable. We don't have to worry about that at all. Now, would I choose this optic as my, you know, standard infantryman's optic? I would totally not be against it, put it that way. I have several friends uh, who have used the one to six VCOGs in combat and 
none of them have anything bad to say about it. All of them loved it. Their experiences were very, very good. That said, um, some of the differences, of course, is going to be the size. You can see there's a huge size difference without question, uh, as well as weight. There's just there's just difference, right? It's a very big difference. That said, the um, this obviously only goes to six, and these have different reticles than the one to eights have. Now, with a one to eight here in the SCO, something I would not do is I would not go with a mill reticle for your standard infantrymen. Um, your Marines, most of them right now, have been trained on the RCOs, which is a four power ACOG, super lightweight. Obviously, we know that, but it has a BC type of reticle in there, and they're just very fast, very easy, intuitive. In my opinion, if I had to guess, I don't know this for a fact, the reason the Marine Corps went with this optic in a mill reticle is twofold. Number one, the guys who are the, I guess, more elite or higher trained folks in the Marine Corps have been trained on the mill reticle, whether they're in recon or, you know, Marine Special Operations, whatever the case may be, MARSOC. Uh, those guys who are probably making those decisions are familiar with the mill reticle, have been trained on it, know it, and that probably influenced their decision. Additionally, the Marine Corps right now, over the last few years, as of when I'm filming this anyway, has been going back and forth on what type of ammo they're using. They have large quantities of 855 still in stock. I know they have large quantities of 855A1 in stock. Additionally, they have large quantities of uh, 318 in stock as well. So all of those different points of impact as the rounds go down range are going to change. Additionally, like I said, their standard infantry rifle right now is the IAR made by HK with a 16 inch barrel. That said, there's still a lot of Marine Corps units that are fielding 20-inch A4s. There's also a lot of them that are still fielding M4A1s. So those differences in barrel length are going to impact the round as it goes down range, obviously, and how the BDC would be affected. So with that, you can solve all of that by using a mill ballistic solution. No doubt about it. It makes sense. I understand why they did it. That said, for me... I wouldn't have done it. I would have went with a BDC type reticle because again, I've trained infantrymen in the army, obviously not, not in the Marine Corps who have shown up and this guys, this is their job. This is what they do. Right. And they didn't understand how the BDC on their ACOGs worked. Right. So to expect your average infantryman to understand the mill system, it's kind of asking a lot. Now, uh, civilians out there who are watching this at home, you guys may be surprised by that comment, but it's absolutely true. Uh, even in a combat arms MLS, like infantry or mortarman or scout or whatever the case may be, shooting is a small part of the job. So it's just not something that there's a tremendous amount of emphasis on of course in the marine corps there's more than there is in the army in terms of marksmanship no doubt about it but again to get everybody trained up on a mill system you're going to have a hard time a lot of guys just simply won't get the concept i can guarantee it having talked to and worked with a lot of marines over the years it's going to happen that said is it a big deal probably not because again they're probably just going to have dope cards on them anyway index it on your stock and you'll probably be fine um but you know, the size and weight is also an issue if you're talking about fielding it for a general purpose unit. Anybody who's worn body armor, carried heavy packs, carried heavy guns for a long time, over a long period, it just, you know, it sucks, right? Every ounce sucks. And to have 31 ounces versus without a mount anyway, I don't know what the Marine Corps was using on their RCOs, but this thing's like 12 ounces with your standard uh, four power ACOG going up tremendously in terms of weight now you do get an increase in lethality without question in my opinion the extra magnification range allows guys who are scouts or recon guys to get just absolutely more information at distance that they can feed back to their commanders to make decisions on the battlefield that's important without question and i'm sure a lot of those folks were probably when they were using their acogs also carrying along a spotting scope that may or may not be necessary now that we have the ability to have an eight power magnification with fantastic glass on your rifle right so that that can be an added capability that you don't have pros and cons to everything for sure um do i think these will be liked by the marines yes with the exception of the weight i think a lot of them are going to like the 1x shooting capability that you have you know if you're out there doing a mix of CQB and mountain terrain operations. It's hard to beat an LV, LPVO, particularly one that is very durable like this one and has tremendous glass. So what do I think about it? Well, I think the actual optic itself is phenomenal. From a civilian use, um, I'm not sure that, you know, this is the reticle and stuff and combination that you should go with. I'm absolutely not sure that it isn't either, though. It's There's nothing wrong with it. 
And I would imagine as a civilian, having the ability to have the mill system is nice as well, because you can move it around on different guns and use the firing solution that the mill system gives you. So that certainly is a nice thing. They also offer several other uh, reticle sit-ups though for the VCOGs that are not what you're gonna find here on the SCO version adopted again by the Marine Corps. So there is that. I think with that, I think we covered everything on the optic itself if you guys have any questions or anything like that about the optic you can let me know like i said these are available for civilian purchase right now that is a relatively recent thing uh Trigicon was doing all they could to fill the marine corps contract they have filled it now at this point so they are offering these to civilians for civilian purchase and you can go ahead and pick one up if you'd like to do so Again, guys, if you have any questions, let me know. You can post down below at my social media sites or down below in the comments here where you are watching this. Additionally, um, if you're new here and you like this type of video and you haven't hit the subscribe button, go ahead and do that. Uh, we do a lot of in-depth uh, reviews just like this one. And uh, if you've hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and you're not seeing two to four videos a week here on the channel, you can sign up for my email at the website on your screen right now. This email goes out at most once a month and it has all of the videos since the previous email went out because right now I have over 700,000 subscribers and 10% of my viewers don't watch my videos within the first week that they're out. Typically, there's exceptions to that. So what that lets me know is that YouTube is not notifying my subscribers. That email is a way to get around that and have no big tech giant censoring your eyes from my content. Additionally, if this goes on sale, which as of right now it is actually, I will send out uh, that deal as well as six or seven of the best deals that I find around the internet in my daily deals email. You can sign up for that at the website here on your screen. And with that, I think that's all I got for you. Thank you all for watching. I truly appreciate each and every one of you and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.